We are in the northwest of England at yet another partially completed site. Uh, these type of sites, they are rarely on the market because they tend to be sold off market through a network of developers and people like ourselves who buy them off. So really it's about developing relationships with banks and people who are involved in sites like this so that they know that you're out there looking for, uh, for, for projects that are halfway done or that are distressed. The history of this site is that you know the builder went bust but the problem with sites like this when they are left uh, you know incomplete is that you know they're subject to vandalism the house at the end this is the detached house on the site for my understanding there was a roof structure already in place uh, but then fire uh, destroyed most of the roof as well as the internals then you have all of these other units which are partially completed as I've already stated there's no roof on them so it's a case of whatever is inside has been exposed to rain to cold and to whatever else has come at it for the past 12 to 18 months so your job is to really assess if the site and the structures within it are stable worst case you might actually have to bring down some of the structures if uh, there is dry rot and other things uh, of such nature but before your eyes lit up and you start seeing the profit out of a site like this I always throw out a word of caution to know that there's a lot of risk involved in taking on sites like this that you need your uh, to be experienced and also have all the specialists around you to help you assess the risk you're taking on so that ultimately you can put the right level of margins in the offers as well as in your build budget. Okay, the second risk to consider is liability as well as insurance. First of all, can you get insurance uh, for a structure like this as well as all the additional building work you will put uh, on the site? Because you have to make sure that you have adequate coverage because without the right coverage, you might find yourself liable uh, along the way or uh, as you build out the site. And second of all, when you do sell the sites, you have to make sure that you have the right warranty otherwise you might be held liable for any defects that might be existing within the build so you have to consider these items but otherwise once you have understood what the risks are they are there is money to be made in sites like this but you have to carry out your due diligence make sure that you create enough margins of error within there because there are always surprises within sites like this uh, in terms of what you will find when you're actually now developing it out there are things that will come out that you might not have uh, necessarily picked out on the initial inspection or through some of your surveys. Okay, as you can see, this is all exposed timber, which can easily start rotting if it's not protected. Uh, I don't see anything major to, to consider in terms of the beam structure, but nevertheless, that's from just the naked eye. But the moment you actually start having a structural survey, you might actually find out a few things uh, are actually wrong with the site itself that needs to be taken into consideration on how you approach it. So let's say you have gone through all the details on this site and you have costed it up and assessed exactly how much you need to put into it to finish it one of the key consideration is that you have to look at the documents that are attached to the site itself so that's the title plan check out the boundaries and make sure that uh, you know you are buying the right size plot uh, your solicitors and your conveyance lawyers will tend to assist you with these type of things but in addition to that also look at the planning permission uh, and see any um, any requirements and any conditions that needs to be met from the local council in terms of fulfilling the obligations and the conditions of how you build this particular site. As a way to mitigate any further risk uh, once you have started building a site like this is applying uh, quality assurance processes right all the way through the build so that you are assessing the structural elements and every other uh, element of the build itself to ensure that you end up with a house that doesn't have defects because new buildings are you know they, 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 they always tend to have a lot of defects if they are not done well and the risk of that is even greater if there are two contractors who have worked on the site and one can begin to blame the other 
builder so you have to take the site on as if you were the original builder because from a liability point of view you have to then maybe carry that warranty so if there's anything wrong with the foundations or with the structure uh, uh, with the structure walls you have to address it as you do the the build itself to make sure that you have a strong solid structure uh, at the end of your build and also another thing is just carry out an inventory on the site to see what other materials that have been left on site. Uh, double check with, um, with the vendor or the bank if they're selling it, if you will be allowed to have the items which are on site. And if you are able to, you can actually put that into your pricing because some of these materials, they could actually save you a bit of money uh, when you're refurbing or finishing up the build because you already have some material on site that you can more or less use depending on what it is the value then can vary uh, in terms of the impact to your budget but if you look at here and you have all of these material that have been left including all of these bricks uh, this also applies sometimes when you go into some of the units you might actually find their tools and equipment which are left in there uh, all of that can be assessed and you can actually understand what you are allowed to take and if it's all coming with the build uh, and, and the site itself uh, you could actually resell some of these items uh, and if you're smart that can all factor into your budget and see how you can uh, keep your costs down uh, and, and hit that profit margin that you have in mind. Another key consideration you have to take is the connection of the services. As you can see, these are shell structures, so electricity hasn't been connected, the plumbing hasn't been connected. That's a lot of uh, work that has to go into that. And also you have to find out from the local uh, power company how much it will cost to connect it as well as how long uh, they will take to connect. These will all impact potentially on your build schedule and can put you out two or three months while you're waiting for the power company to connect you to the main line. Uh, so it, it's something to consider uh, and something to really make sure that you can cost appropriately uh, because all of this will deter depend on how far is the power line and how far is the connection. Do you need, uh, you know, do you need any other extra equipment put on site? But because there's already power down the road at the other units that are finished, it should tell me that it should not cost you too much to get power uh, as well as your plumbing done. But nevertheless, get a professional to coach you so that that way you are coming in with the right type of price you're putting within your budget. Uh, another key consideration uh, with this site is the structural issues that you can potentially even see. If you look at this wall, you can see it's, for my naked eye, it's not even straight, which tells me that you potentially have to bring it all down and rebuild it. So these are things you have to consider when you're looking um, at redevelopments that are left halfway through because some of the wall structures themselves are not sound and the shell might not be as wet as you might actually think. Uh, because it might actually be cheaper to build it from the base rather than trying to fix what's already there. So this is one of the you know, completed units. It's partially completed because there are a few things that probably just needs to be done. Uh, because sometimes you might even find that the kitchen is in, but the plumbing has not been done to a high standard and you could find leaks. So you need to carry out a defect analysis uh, of the whole unit uh, to look at what needs to be done and what needs to be finished uh, on the site itself. You know, you can see a bit of watermarks on here, which tells me that there could be something to do with the roof. So these are the things you just have to look out for. Uh, the finish is, you know, it's almost done. You got good solid oak doors. Yeah, it, it shouldn't take more than, you know, one or two weeks to, to do this up and put this back up on the market. Okay, so let's just go through and look at the, the rest of the unit. It seems like it's an upside down side where the living quarters are upstairs and then you have the bedrooms downstairs. This is a three bedroom. The bedrooms are different proportions. There's a beautiful view out there. If there's a playground there, how, how loud does it get? Uh, those are the things you have to consider uh, because the buyers who will buy this will be looking at that. Okay. Uh, the bathrooms are all in 
actually have quite a large family bathroom within these, uh, these units. They will lend themselves to a family and you can see that there could be potential buyers and renters uh, within, uh, within the local area. But as you have seen outside, the biggest job is to try to get all of those other units finished. You have three uh, units uh, that are standing in shell condition, one which is bent down, and then you have about three other ones which actually needs to be built from the ground. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a delicate balance you have to take on these type of sites. This house, within a month of getting the site, you can potentially rent it out, but then you have the rest of the work outside, which may take you a bit of while to get, uh, to get finished. Uh, there you go, another site that needs to be completed. I hope you have uh, picked up a few tips from that video. Uh, subscribe, comment, like, so that that way we can keep bringing you content like this to help you make your investment in property much more informed. I'll see you next time.